In this video, what I want to do is work through three different examples that are not the most easy or not the most difficult, but definitely some problems that you need to know how to factor, some quadratic trinomials that you need to know how to factor when A is not going to be equal to one. Because we all recognize when A is not equal to one, it can sometimes be confusing. But I wanted to kind of explain the process of the way to factor, um, kind of using your head, not using any like factoring techniques, um, you know, like box method or diamond method, but kind of like talking our way through this so therefore, even a problem that is, you know, kind of like average in its mean, like it's definitely something that you would want to know how to do for like a test or a quiz or that would show up on an exam. So we're going to want to make sure we can do this in a relatively short amount of time. So, and we also want to kind of understand exactly what we're doing. So let's go and take a look at our first example here. I'll have a 3x squared minus a 14x plus a 15. Now, the reason why this is not like super easy or super difficult is because my first term here, my first coefficient is going to be a prime number, and then 15 is going to be a composite. So the reason why I'm talking about prime and composite numbers is all based on the number of factors for each of those numbers, right? Because the whole process of factoring is just rewriting an expression as a product of two factors, all right? So when we have a quadratic trinomial, we can break this up into a product of two binomials, all right? Now, the nice thing about having a 3x squared here right, is there's only two terms that are going to multiply to give me a 3x squared, right, as long as we're dealing with integers. So therefore, I can have a 3x and an x. So that kind of makes things pretty, you know, pretty easy, at least for um, pretty easy for us um, in this regard. Now, the problem comes into is what numbers do I put in here? And when we're dealing with the 15, we have multiple different factors, right? It's not prime. So I can multiply a 15 times a 1, or I can multiply a 5 times a 3. So we got options, right? We don't know which one to pick. Now, furthermore, we could talk about the positive and the negatives, which we'll get into in a second. But one thing I want you to remember is whenever my last term is positive, that means your two factors are either going to be both positive or both negative. And the way to determine that is look at your middle term. So if your last term is positive, right, we know we have both positive, both negative. My middle term is negative, right? So therefore, both my factors are going to be negative, right? Because to get to your middle term, you're combining your two products. So a negative plus a negative is going to be a negative. We'll talk about that. I'll show you a way to confirm your answer here in a second. Um, so we know that these two numbers both multiply to give us 15, right? Now, the problem is, though, we need to check. We need to check. We need to check which option is going to work, right? And to do that, what we need to do is kind of think about our products here of our inner and our outer, okay? Because we know the last two terms are going to multiply to give us 15, right? That's our two options here. But what we want to do is we want to combine these two products, and we're trying to get to a negative 14. Now, I want to kind of give you some some like obvious ones that we're not going to, want to do. You're not going to want to put a 15 here and a one here. Why? Well, because three times 15 is 45, right? We're trying to get to a negative 14, right? So we're trying to combine our two products to get to 14. And if I already have a 45, that's not going to work, right? So we're not going to go that route. Um, now, what we can do here is even if I think about this, putting a 15 over here and a one there, that still just kind of seems like that's already going to be larger than 14. So that's not going to work. Now, what I do recognize here is if I had a three times three, that would give me a nine. And if I did a one, you know, X times a five, that would give me a five and nine plus five is 14, right? So I'm kind of thinking about what two numbers are going to multiply to give me 15. And yeah, nine and five work, right? So again, let's check our work. Three X times X is three X squared, right? So we have that product. We have the negative five times negative three is a negative is a positive 15 that works. And then again, since we, since my last term is positive and middle term is negative, you're adding these two components or these two um, products to get my negative, uh, to get a negative 14, which again does work, right? Negative five X times three X times X is a negative nine X, which is a negative 14 X. So you can always go back and check your, check your work to make sure it makes sense. Let's go and take a look at another example here. Now, this example is going to have maybe like a little bit bigger numbers, maybe some more factors here. But again, this idea is the same. We know we can rewrite this as a product of two binomials, right? And hopefully you recognize whenever your first term is a has a prime coefficient, then you can just deal with those two factors, 5a and a. Now we just need to deal with 24. Now, 24 is kind of not really that fun of a number because it has a lot of factors, right? So we can do 24 times 1. Uh, we can do a 12 times 2. We can do an eight times three. We can do a six times four. So this one, we got a lot of options. Um, now we do make the problem a little bit easier because my last term is positive and my middle term is positive. So again, we're going to be adding the products, but now we're only going to be focusing on the addition of these, right? So when I'm looking at this, sorry, I'm just checking. There we go. Um, so therefore I'm going to be adding. 
So I know both my factors are going to be positive. Okay. Now, again, we have to be super conscious here of what we're doing. We got to add our two products, my inner and my outer product to get to a 23. So whatever I multiply five by, I don't want that to be bigger than 24. So I'm not going to add a five times 24. That's not going to work. I'm not going to add the five times 12, five times eight, or the five times the six. None of those are going to work. Okay. So therefore I know that I'm going to be multiplying a five times, um, I'm going to multiply five by one of these factors, right? Because again, it has to add to, I still have to add it to the other factor. And therefore I'm going to want to add the a times the other factor. So let's just kind of do a quick little work. If I did five times four, that'd give me 20. Well, then this would be a six times a, well, that's going to add to a six, a plus 20, a, which would be a, um, 26, a that's not gonna work. What about if I did a three? Five times three is 15. And then therefore the other factor would be an eight. Well, eight times a is eight a. So eight a plus 15 a is going to be 23 a ding, ding, ding. We're all set. Okay. Um, let's go and take a look at some another or one more example here. Now this example, I'm going to switch it up in this example. What I'm going to do is now we're going to put the composite number here in front in the beginning. Now this kind of throws a little ringer in, um, to our problem. And I still consider it a fairly like average problem because we still have a prime number, right? So our last number is now going to be the prime factor. Um, so therefore it's still going to limit our options. However, for when we're dealing with a product of two binomials, we have two options here, right? We could do an eight Y times Y, or we could do a four Y times a Y, right? So we have a couple options here. And so it does open up that, um, kind of element does kind of open up that element where this could be more of a difficult type problem. Furthermore, to make this actually a little bit more difficult, my last number is negative. So therefore both of my products here are not going to be, um, both of my products are, are both of my factors here are not going to be the same sign. One's going to be positive. One's going to be negative. So this is getting a little bit more tricky, but it's okay. We can still kind of work this one out because we know that the two factors have to be a three and a one, right? Because that's it. That's our only option. So we just need to think about then, well, which number is going to work? And then, um, which numbers would work to go ahead and get a difference of two. Now, again, notice here, I'm let's kind of work on this first one. Cause usually when you have your factors, like farthest apart, that's usually the best way I like to kind of start at. Um, so in this case I have a, you know, three, so we have three and one Remember, one's positive one negative. So what we're trying to do now, instead of adding the two products, now what I'm going to do is try to find the difference between the two products. Now, again, to think about this, I don't want to put a three and a one here because what's the difference between an eight times three, which is 24 and a one times Y that has a difference of 23. That's way too far. I want a difference of two. Okay. And even if you switch them up, what if you put a three here and a one here again, eight times one and three times Y or sorry, eight times one and a three times one that has a difference of five, right? So that's not going to work. So this is not going to be one that's even going to be close. So I'm not even going to bother working over here. Now in this example, again, sometimes like if you get confused, what I like to tell students is just like, just pick a place, right? Let's just pick a three here and then a one here. All right. Now, when we multiply this though, notice what we have here in this case, um, what we're going to do is a four times three is going to be a 12 and then a one times Y. Well, the difference between one Y and a 12 Y is 11 Y. So that's not going to work. So what I want to do is let's say, all right, then let's do a one and a four Y and, oh, I'm sorry. That's supposed to be a two Y. No wonder I was like, thinking about why is that not working? That's a two Y. Okay. It still doesn't work because if I put that three here and two Y plus three and a one, so that'd still be a 12 and then minus two would be a 10 or difference at two would be 10. So that's still not going to work. Okay. Um, now what if, so then let's switch it up. Let's put a one here and then a three here. So now notice the difference here. Three times two is six, right? four times one is four. The difference between six and four is two. Now we just need to determine which number, which one should we make positive? Which one should be negative? Now, again, when my middle term is negative, I want the larger of the two products to be negative. So what is my larger of my two products? Three times two Y, which is six Y or four I times one, which is four I. So this one we want to be positive, right? And this one we want to be a negative, right? And again, we can just verify everything. Four Y times two Y is going to be an eight Y squared, right? Negative three times one is going to be a negative three. And then the diff, and then when you combine or find, or when you combine here a negative three, a negative six Y plus a four Y, that's going to give you a negative two Y, which I wrote with an X. Maybe that's why things were confusing, but 
but I just recognize it. So that was not supposed to be that difficult of a problem. But if you're looking for some difficult problems, not with different X's and Y's, but all with the same variable, then go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here.